And number one is God is responsible. And, you know, obviously this is not a position that we believe, but this is the position of Calvinism. Calvinism is, you know, tulip, T-U-L-I-P, and the U in tulip is unconditional election. Unconditional election means that God just chooses who will believe, who will not believe, who will be saved, and who will not be saved unconditionally. For no reason at all, just for his glory, he would choose somebody to believe and others not to, and it all brings him glory. Now, we believe this is heresy. We believe this is, this, is the, this is not the God of the Bible. God does not choose who goes to heaven and who goes to hell, because if he did, that, that is unfair. Because how, how can you hold the person responsible when it wasn't even their choice? You know, it was God's choice that sent them to hell. So if God predestined them for hell for his glory, then God is ultimately responsible, right? Because how can you hold, how can, you know, how can I hold Alex responsible for a choice he can't even make? Do you know? Now, if, God, if hell is God's righteous judgment on sin, you know, or, 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 no, if hell is God's righteous judgment for those that have sinned and rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, then why is he sending people there that don't even have the ability to believe on Jesus Christ? You know what I mean? So if it's not that people, remember, because it's not that people are sent to hell because of their sin. They're sent to hell because they did not believe on Jesus Christ. So how can then God say, this is a righteous judgment. I'm doing the right thing by sending this person to hell, but yet I don't even give them the ability or the opportunity to believe on Jesus Christ. How is that a righteous judgment? How are they being punished for something they, they could not even do? And you know what? The, the God of Calvinism is a monster. Because what sort of, what sort of God creates people without even the ability to believe and accept the grace and just creates them knowing that they're going to go to hell and just creates them to go to hell. You know, what sort of God is that? So the God of Calvinism is a monster and it's not the God that I wish. This is definitely not the position I would take that God is responsible for those that go to hell. And you know what's funny? Because even somebody that believes in Calvinism does not take that view. And this is one, you know, I just wanted to mention three big contradictions I see with Calvinism. And this isn't a sermon about Calvinism. But the, the three big contradictions of Calvinism is even a Calvinist does not accept that. Because if you say to a Calvinist, is it God that is the responsible for that person going to hell? No, they'll say, no, 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 it's their sin. Their sin is sending them to hell. But then the, the contradiction is that they can't believe on Jesus Christ. They haven't accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. And they say, well, that's why they're going to hell, because they're a sinner and they didn't believe on Jesus Christ. But then you say to them, but they can't believe on Jesus Christ because God has not even allowed them to believe on Jesus Christ. And it's almost like they, they, they can't see the, the contradiction there of, you know, the fact that this, they're trying to hold the sinner responsible for their sin. But ultimately, God is the one responsible because God is the one not even allowing them to believe. So... That, I think, is one big contradiction. And I, I find as well, you know, when I talk to a lot of people that believe in Calvinism, and you probably experience this too when you speak to people that believe in Calvinism, that generally they, they, they recognize this contradiction, which is God chose them to go to hell, and logically he then is responsible. But then they still want to hold to the position that the man is a sinner and it's their own sin and their rejection of Jesus Christ that is sending them to hell. And, and obviously that contradicts. But then when they try and resolve these two contradictions, they're, they're, I guess what, what I would call a cop-out answer is, well, you know, we just don't have the wisdom of God. God's ways are higher than my ways. And, I, and we, we just can't understand everything about God. And we just have to accept that this is something that we'll never understand. And, you know, that, that might sound right, like spiritual. You know, that might sound pious, but, you know, you know, they sort of say, you're like, who, we, we are mere humans. Who are we to question God's judgment? Who, you know, like the potter and the clay. If he's made somebody to dishonor, like, hey, that's, that's God. You know, who am I to even question what he's doing? So to me, that's a cop-out answer because, my, you know, my response to that is, well, you, or you could just change. You could just change and reject Calvinism and Calvinism is wrong and you wouldn't have that contradiction anymore. Do you know what I mean? It's like when people take James 2 and they say, oh, you know, see, it works and that's how you know you're saved and... And you're like, well, what about Romans 4? When it says, to him that worketh not. And they're like, well, I, I don't know how to reconcile these two. Well, you reconcile them by rejecting your understanding of James 2 and realizing that James 2 is your works in the eyes of men and Romans 4 is your works in the eyes of God, which does not justify you. And then you have a reconciliation and then you don't have a false view. And it's like that with Calvinism. 
you know, there's a contradiction there. That's, that's showing you that you've got the wrong position and something needs to change to harmonize that scripture so you have sound doctrine. So that's one big contradiction with Calvinism. But number two, uh, let me show you a couple of verses here in Ezekiel 33. <coughs> Ezekiel 33. Is that the verse I want to go to? Yeah, so I'll read you a couple of verses. Ezekiel 33, 11. Say unto them, as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? So God is saying here he doesn't have any pleasure in the wicked. And obviously in the old covenant you had to turn from your sin to get that physical uh, reprieve from God. And the spiritual significance in the New Testament is we turn from our evil way by believing on Jesus Christ, uh, not by turning from our sins because that is works. So this is an Old Testament passage I just wanted to show you to show that you know God is saying here, I don't have pleasure in the wicked, I, I, pleasure in the death of the wicked. He doesn't, he, he's not willing that any should perish, uh, but that all should come to repentance. And we'll see that in 2 Peter 3. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So the Bible is very clear. Is it, it's never God's will just to create people, to send them to hell. God created them to bless them. He wants them to be with him. He's not willing that any should perish. But unfortunately, people reject the grace of God. They don't want God. They don't want God's gift of eternal life. And they are responsible for um, rejecting that gift. So, you know, I won't turn to Revelation. But we know in Revelation it says, Whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. Now, this is the second big contradiction I see in Calvinism, is if God is the one deciding who goes to heaven and who goes to hell, why is he contradicting his own will? Do you know what I mean? If God is saying, I don't want anyone to go to hell, I don't want anyone to perish, whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely, but then Calvinism says, but except you guys, you know, except this group that I haven't chosen, you, you know, I don't want you to be saved, because he's the one that made that choice. So how does that even make sense? And that's why... It's another reason why Calvinism is false. And, you know, the last one, the last one I find funny, uh, one contradiction I find within, within Calvinists is, is with soul winning. Because, you know, they do go soul winning because they're commanded to go soul winning, but yet they believe their soul winning makes no difference because the person's going to get saved whether or not they go soul winning or not. But then they go just go soul winning anyway. So they'll go soul winning with the urgency, but at the same time believing that what they do makes no difference. So... It's just interesting. Uh, I find these contradictions with Calvinism interesting. And, you know, as a Calvinist, instead of just accepting these views and saying, well, I don't know how to reconcile the two, you should just change and um, reject or maybe consider that Calvinism is a false doctrine. And the last thing on this point is just, well, they'll say, well, somebody might say, well, what about reprobates? You know, because re reprobates, they go to hell because of God. You know, because God has rejected them. But see, the difference between Calvinism and reprobates is, see, Calvinism teaches that the person is reprobate from the get-go because they cannot even believe. They don't even have a choice to become reprobate. Whereas a reprobate in the Bible is somebody that has rejected God and God has now rejected them. It's just that that point in time has come before death. Because anybody that does not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and comes to the point of death is now reprobate because they, they cannot, no matter what they do, go to heaven. It's just that with some people, that period, that, that point in time comes before death and they are made reprobate before they die. So rep being reprobate is different to Calvinism because they had a choice. God didn't choose beforehand uh, for them to reject him. So that's, that's the first position. First position is God is responsible for the person that goes to hell. And obviously that, I believe, is false.